I told you I hate this food. You are harassing me by making the stuff I don't like, aren't you? Your husband likes it, though. Just cook something else, right now. I've had enough of how my mother-in-law yelled and screamed when she didn't like something. I'm not sure if I can take her sarcasm for the rest of my life. I was half resigned to the fact that I would have to endure my mother-in-law's bullying. But then, something happened that completely changed my life. My name is Ellen. My husband George and I have been married for three years now. We were living with my parents-in-laws at their house. My husband, who is often not home from work, is currently on a business trip. I used to feel uneasy not having him around, but now I am so busy that I don't miss him too much. My daily schedule is like this. I get up at the crack of dawn to cook a meal for my father-in-law, who wakes up quite early. While he's eating, I clean the house and do laundry. And when he finishes eating, I clean up the dishes right away. After finishing all the household chores, I finally push myself to get ready to take off to my part-time job. And as soon as I come home from work at 5, I make the meal. And after that, I clean the house, do laundry for the second time. And the day is finally over. Such a restless day is tiring enough. But there is one thing that makes my life even more tiring. That was my mother-in-law's bullying. Although my mother-in-law does not work and stays at home all the time, she does not do any housework. My husband once told me that he couldn't even remember what his mother's home-cooked meal tasted like. I guess she didn't do much housework since my husband was small. Even though she did nothing, my mother-in-law had an attitude. She was very picky about the food I cook and insists that the places I clean are dirty. I felt terrible that she would go to such lengths to make me feel bad about myself. My mother-in-law seems to have made it her hobby to bully me. Because she was such a person, she was well known in the neighborhood as a show-off. She would wear jewelry that didn't suit her fat fingers and stroll around the neighborhood. When they saw her, the neighbors would say she looked nice even though they didn't think so. The neighbors didn't want to upset my mother-in-law. All the reason for that was my father-in-law. My father-in-law was an executive at a well-known local company. He's retired now, but he's a well-liked figure and he's still involved with people he knows from work. There are a lot of people who work for the same company as my father-in-law, so he's a big part of the community. That's why the neighbors were so concerned about my mother-in-law. My father-in-law was never bossy, but my mother-in-law was always bossy because of him. The neighbors didn't like it, but they never talked back. I felt like I had no one on my side when I saw how they handled things. No matter what my mother-in-law did to me, I had no one to talk to in the neighborhood. But my father-in-law was very concerned about me. After retiring, my father-in-law, who had always been very hardworking, became sick more often. Then, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with cancer. It was very advanced so he was told that he needed to prepare himself. I am so grateful for my father-in-law, who is the complete opposite of my mother-in-law. I understand that is also because of him that we have been able to live without worrying about finances. To show my appreciation, I try to take care of my father-in-law as much as I could. I talk to him to keep him occupied and sometimes play cards with him. The most important thing I did was to prepare easy-to-eat meals for him so that he could get as much nutrition as possible. My father-in-law was happy that I cared, and he said many words of thanks to me. Thank you. I'm happy every day. No, no, no. I'm just doing what I can. I'm sorry for the burden my wife has put on you. 
She just doesn't do anything around the house. My father-in-law seems to be concerned about my mother-in-law's laziness. I guess my father-in-law's gentle nature makes it difficult for him to say anything about my mother-in-law's behavior. Still, it was enough for me that he knew my mother-in-law treated me badly. I'm sorry for leaving everything to you, Ellen. When my wife is the one who should be doing a better job, you don't have to force yourself to take care of me, you know. No, please don't say such a thing. I just want to repay you for everything you've done for me. Thank you. My father-in-law was holding my hand, and tears were welling up in the corners of his eyes. Then one day, things took a turn for the worse. My father-in-law's condition got worse. And he had to be hospitalized in an emergency. When he was taken to the hospital by ambulance, he was in a coma. The doctors told us that they didn't know how much time he had, and that my family had to be prepared. It was so sudden that my mind was in a state of panic. I couldn't stop crying when I saw my father-in-law in front of me, his face covered with pain. I thought my mother-in-law must have been very distressed under such circumstances, so I asked her how she was doing. However, she had a look on her face that I did not expect. I'm sure he'll never recover from this, but his inheritance is going to be enough. Her insane word made me very angry. Meanwhile. My father-in-law did not regain consciousness, but his breathing was stable. I visited him every day and talked to him a lot, even though he couldn't hear me. I hoped that if I talked to him like this, he would wake up one day and answer me. But he didn't seem to wake up. As for my mother-in-law, she never came to visit him. Why don't you go check on your husband once in a while? Don't you tell me what to do. I'm too busy every day. I can spend my time in a hospital. It's a waste of time. Whenever I try to encourage her to come visit him, she just kept saying horrible things to me. She even had the audacity to say something like this. Hey, Ellen, you bring in clean clothes for him every day, don't you? You should pretend I did it, okay? Don't make the mistake of saying you did it. My mother-in-law was trying to make herself look good. He'll never wake up, and his inheritance is all mine. Don't talk nonsense to people. You got it. The only thing on my mother-in-law's mind was my father-in-law's inheritance. I was so angry at her selfishness that I decided to take action. Since my father-in-law was no longer in the house, my mother-in-law's bullying was worse than ever. Stop talking about visiting him, and start cooking. It's too early for preparing dinner, and I'm going to the hospital now. I'll be home soon, then I'll cook. You really piss me off, Ellen. You know that. I've told you a hundred times. That old man can do nothing but to leave me his money. He doesn't need any visit nor sympathy. My mother-in-law kept saying horrible things to my father-in-law. I wanted to say something back, but I managed to hold it back. After a while, I received a phone call from the hospital with the great news I had been waiting for. Is it true? Thank. God, my father-in-law finally woke up from a coma, and to my surprise, his condition had stabilized. I immediately went with my mother-in-law to the hospital room. Welcome back. Good to see you. Me too. I'm sorry for all the trouble I caused you. My father-in-law smiles peacefully. My mother-in-law acted like she was overjoyed to see my father-in-law. Honey, I took care of you every day. I see. 
My clothes are clean. You did all this for me? Yes, I did everything. My mother in law stared at me. I guess she wanted me to play along with her. I ignored her signs and let her out of my sight. I could tell by the way she looked at me that she was annoyed with me for not listening to her. And my father in law didn't miss it. Well, I'm gonna go now. I have some errands to do, so please take care of the rest. Okay, Ellen. My mother in law was in a bad mood because I ignored her sign. She looked at my father in law's face for a moment and left the hospital room. Ellen, are you okay? What? What do you mean? My wife's attitude was strange, wasn't it? I thought it was you who took care of me all the time. My father in law saw through it all. Well, I think you would be shocked if I told you the truth. Don't worry. I'm fine now. Just tell me the truth. Did she do anything to you while I was gone? The truth was that I have been keeping evidence to tell someone about what my mother in law has done. I kept it for the right reasons, but I never thought I would have to share it with anyone. Well, I'm sorry if this makes you sick. But here, please listen to this. I felt so bad that I took out my voice recorder and played the recording of her voice. I was sure my father in law couldn't bear to hear everything my mother in law said on there. When my husband dies, I want my inheritance to all myself. I want my husband to die soon. I don't want to take care of him, it's a waste of time. Such statesmen were all over the place. I looked at my father in law with concern, but he was laughing instead. She's turned into a greedy bastard, hasn't she? I can give any of my inheritance to such a woman. He was laughing, but I could sense that he was very angry inside. A few days later, my father in law's health became stable. And he was able to leave the hospital. After returning home, my mother in law went out for her way to tell my father in law how hard it was to take care of him every day. My father in law did not object to this and just listened. Shortly after he came home, my husband came home from his business trip to see his father. Dad, I'm sorry I'm late. I'm fine, as you can see. But more importantly, how's work? Yeah, it's all good. They changed the location for me. That's within commuting distance from here. I'm really glad that you and Ellen are looking out for me. My father in law seemed to be really happy that my husband and I were there for him. From then on, my husband and I continued to care for my father in law. He recovered temporarily, but his health did not completely improve. I can tell he is getting weaker and weaker every day. This time, I realize that the real goodbye is approaching. My husband and I promised ourselves to do our best until we had to say goodbye. However, my mother in law was still the same as before. Not taking care of my father in law at all. She would just went out and wasn't home. I guess she thought that now that my husband has come home, she can take it easy with more hands. Also, my father in law and my husband came back at the same time, it seemed to make it harder for her to bully me. My father in law was eating less and less, and it was obvious that he has no time. He said his last words to us as he was trying to squeeze them out. Thank you both so much. I've left you a will, and I'd like you to read it after I'm gone. It was very nice of you to take care of me until the end. With these words, 
his life came to an end. There were many people at my father-in-law's funeral. I was deeply moved to think that my father-in-law was so trusted at work and was loved by so many people. On the other hand, my mother-in-law was so lively in such a situation. It was thanks to my father-in-law's personality that so many people were able to gather. My mother-in-law acted as if she was the one who brought all those people together. She even went around telling everyone that she was the one who took care of him until the very end. She didn't cry a single tear, and it was so disconcerting to see her at such a fake cry. You didn't care about your husband at all. I suppressed my desire to expose my mother-in-law's behavior to the attendees, but I didn't want to make a scene in front of my father-in-law's grave. The funeral went very well, and I was relieved that my father-in-law could go to heaven in peace. When we got home, my mother-in-law's attitude changed drastically. Whoa, I'm so tired. Funerals are always depressing. Well, now, I have my inheritance and I can look forward to the rest of my life. My mother-in-law seemed convinced that she had my father-in-law's inheritance. She was in a good mood, mumbling about what she wants. That's when my husband showed her the will. Sorry to put you in a bad mood, but dad left a will before he passed away. I haven't read it yet, but I think it says something about inheritance. I don't need to look at the will. It's all mine. Okay, but let's just come down and read it. When my husband carefully opened the will, my mother-in-law took the paper roughly and started to read it. What? What the hell is this? When my mother-in-law saw the will, she turned pale, stood there with her mouth open. I took the will back from my stunned mother-in-law and read through the contents. It stated that I will inherit everything my father-in-law had. It also says that I'm the heir, but that he wanted the inheritance to be used by me and George as a couple. Ellen took care of Dad while I was away. This totally makes sense. That's how grateful he was to Ellen. But all of it? This is so wrong. She interrupted our conversation and started screaming. It's not right that you, a stranger, should get the whole thing. She must have forged the will. You flirted with him, you dirty little bitch. Hey, mom, stop. Finally, my husband started to get angry. You've never taken care of Dad. I've heard stories from both Ellen and Dad. That's why he's so grateful to Ellen for helping him when he was in need. My mother-in-law became hysterical and started crying. Please, please, at least leave me the house. I did feel sorry for her to lose the house she has lived for a long time. To calm my sobbing mother-in-law, I decided to give her a small portion of my inheritance. Then, you will have this house. I know you don't have any money, so I'll give you some. But please, don't live like you did before. I said as I looked my mother-in-law straight in the face. We are leaving this house, so please live on your own. Right after she knew she would get the house and some money, her mood changed all at once. Oh, thank God. I was afraid I'd lose the house too. If you were gonna live, now, get the hell out. And then she went right back to being a big jerk. I was so frustrated that I fell for my mother-in-law's fake cry. But if I leave this house, I will never have to live with my mother-in-law again. The joy of being away from my mother-in-law overweighed the frustration of giving away a small portion of my inheritance. A week later, we decided to move out. 
and start looking for a place to live. For now, we're thinking about moving into an apartment and build a house soon. Thanks to the inheritance left to us by my father in law, we will be able to build a nice house. I'm also planning to build an altar for my father in law as a token of my appreciation. I was so excited to think that from now on, I will be able to live without the fear of my mother in law's eyes on me. On the other hand, my mother in law had not been able to make any change in her lifestyle. And she was still spending money as widely as ever. In addition, now we have left. Word had spread and the neighbors changed. Now my father in law has passed away, the neighbors no longer need to be concerned about my mother in law. People who had been complaining about my mother in law started to spreading rumors, and she became more and more isolated. My mother in law, who had always been extravagant, spent more than her savings and pension. Finally, she sold the house, which she begged to have. She has no house and no job, and we have no idea that she's doing right now. She has nothing to do with me now, so I don't really care where she goes or what she does. <laughs>